Over the past four years of me being a self-taught developer, I have known a lot of people who said they were inspired by me, for example, and they wanted to do the same of becoming a self-taught developer. But through this entire time, out of all the people who told me they wanted to do the same as I did, to learn the code online, become a software developer and get a real software developer job or build their own startup, do you want to guess how many of those people actually succeeded? Zero. Not even one. And this is the sad reality of becoming a self-taught developer. Almost all self-taught developers fail. However, after becoming and being a self-taught developer, I've also got to know a lot of people who also did it successfully. So given that I know a lot of people who have tried and failed to become self-taught developers, as well as a lot of people who actually did it, and of course having done it myself, and also having taught a lot of people do this in my paid program, Python Developer Bootcamp, I have, I have identified five common reasons why it is that almost everyone who tries to learn the code online and become a software developer fails. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what these five reasons are and exactly how to avoid them. Because while, while this might sound disheartening, it's actually just five quite basic things where even if you just do one of these five things wrong, you are going to fail. But if you watch this, you will know what to look out for. So you can actually be one of the few people who end up succeeding. And the first reason is that you don't have a why. It's probably the primary reason that leads to success in any domain, whether it's programming or learning a language or learning to make YouTube videos or whatever it is. When most people start learning a thing like this, they just start kind of because it sounds cool. They saw online that all oh, people can make a lot of money with being a programmer or something like that. So they just start learning the code without really understanding what they are getting them what they're getting themselves into. And after a couple of weeks or even days in some cases, they realize that yeah, this learning the code thing is actually a bit more difficult than I thought. And when they don't have a clear why, a clear reason why they're doing it, they end up stopping. Are you super motivated about just changing careers? Is this a career that you actually really want to do and is worth sacrificing for? That is a good reason. Or if you just really want to be an entrepreneur and you realize that I want to, that you want to build your own apps, you want the lifestyle of just working from your laptop, like traveling around the world, kind of like I do while building, building my startup, that can be a great reason. And always keep those reasons in mind when you hit those roadblocks, those moments when, he, when it's difficult, because otherwise you're just going to quit. The second reason is that you're not shipping, meaning that you're not building things, you're not actually using the skills of coding that you've learned so far to build real projects. Simply learning from tutorials endlessly is not real learning because the way the human brain actually learns is that it doesn't learn when you're like watching someone do something, you're reading about it, it learns when you're applying the skills they've learned. So what you wanna do is get into this like learn, build, learn loop where you learn something and you instantly try to use those skills to build something and then you go and learn something new and build something with it, etc., etc., and you'll and you'll realize that you learn much, much quicker when you learn like this, rather than try just trying to learn everything first and then trying to build something. Because when you go to build something, you'll realize that you forgot all the stuff that you learned three weeks ago, but this will not happen if you're constantly applying what you learn. With that, the third reason why most self-taught developers fail is that you're not serious enough. Again, this is a process that is going to be difficult. So you need to approach it almost like a job. You can't just approach it as a hobby because you have tons of competition who are taking this super, super seriously. They did hours every day on learning the code. They have routines, they give themselves deadlines, they give themselves a proper curriculum that they want to study, things they want to learn. They don't just kind of like learn whatever they feel like on a day-to-day -day basis. So what you want to do is build yourself a system that works for you. So even if you have a job right now or you need to go to school or something, find a period of time every single day that you will be able to dedicate to just coding. Maybe it's not absolutely every single day if you have something come up or something like that, but most days you should be able to stick to this schedule. Give yourself clear milestones, give yourself clear give yourself clear things that you're going to do in this time period. It could be in the morning from like 7 to 9 a.m. or something. It could be in the evening from like 5 to 7 p.m. or something like that. But at least one, ideally two or three hours every single day if you actually want to succeed with this. But with this, it's easy to make the fourth mistake, which is to try to learn 
everything. Now, the biggest misconception about becoming a developer is that you have to learn absolutely everything. You have, have to know every single computer science topic. You, know, you need to understand AI, you need to understand DevOps, you need to understand all these different things. You need to know 10 different programming languages, five different frameworks, and that is absolutely not how it works at all. To become a professional developer, all you really have to do is master one or two programming languages, one or two frameworks, like depending on what kind of developer you want to become, and just the fundamentals of programming and the fundamentals of software architecture in whatever area of programming you're interested in. That is it. And then maybe if you want to apply for big tech jobs, you need to understand data structures and algorithms and things like that because they test those in interviews. But what you don't need is super complex CS knowledge. That's why you don't need a degree to do this. You don't need 10 programming languages. If you want to become, for example, a full stack developer, you just need enough languages to write code in the back end and the front end, which can all be done just in JavaScript, for example. So if you want to do that, you might just learn JavaScript and that could be the only programming language you ever have to learn. And besides with programming languages, once you know one, it's very easy to learn other ones because they're all kind of, all kind of similar. So I wouldn't worry about that. You don't need to learn, learn every single new framework to this day on my startup. Like we're not using the latest and greatest frameworks and everything like that. We're just using what I happen to know, the stack that I am really good at, because when you want to build something, whether it's for your own app or for a company, it's best to just use whatever you're comfortable with. And that is going to get you much, much better and faster results. Any frameworks can be used to build any app. There's just some that might be slightly better for something. But, it, but this is just something I would, again, not worry about at all. And this is also why that reason two happens. People think that they have to learn all this stuff before they can build, when really you just need to learn kind of the basics and then you can just start building and that's going to be the best way to learn anyway. And the fifth and probably the biggest reason, and honestly, if you don't do this and you do all the other things wrong, you're still going to succeed, is that you quit the second things get hard. The big thing with this video is that learning the code is going to be difficult. And whenever you're learning something, valuable, you need to understand that it has to be difficult, like almost by necessity, because if it was easy, everyone would have learned it and then it would not be valuable anymore because everyone in the world would know how to code. It would be like knowing how to speak, like everyone knows how to speak, so it's not valuable to learn how to speak. But with coding, it's valuable precisely because most people can't do it and there's a lot of high value things you can do with it, of course. And because it's hard, that keeps the bar high where most people simply won't be able to do it. Therefore, if you manage to do it, it is super valuable. So you need to understand that the precise reason why you probably want to do it, which is that it can make you a lot of money down the line, is only possible because it's difficult. So you cannot get into the process expecting that it's going to be a walk in the park, that it's going to be super easy. It is going to be difficult. There's going to be a lot of moments when you don't feel like doing it and you're just going to have to keep going. Like there's nothing really else I can say here. Your brain is going to come up with all these different reasons for why you can't do it. Like, oh, this isn't for me. The job market is there, like blah, 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 blah. And you need to just forget about all those reasons because if you listen to your brain when it's telling you these things and you end up quitting, then definitely you're not going to succeed, obviously, like by definition. And, and as with anything, there's only like two kinds of people. There's the people who succeed and the people who quit before they succeeded. Because literally, if you just never quit, you'll eventually succeed. Like if you do something for five years, it's very difficult to fail because after five years, if you just keep doing it, you're going to be so good that someone is going to pay for your skills. You find a way to enjoy it to the point where even if you don't get results straight away, which you which you won't get, like you, they, you will not get results straight away, you will still be able to keep going and eventually you will succeed. With that said, if you want to actually understand how to do this step by step, what are the things that you actually have to learn, I recommend watch this video right here. It's my full guide to learning the code. And with that, I will see you in the next video.